I am Marcy James, and I am the Director of Industry Outreach for Realtor.com. And I am incredibly grateful to Realtor.com for giving me the opportunity to do what I love to do. Um, my passion is around building relationships with agents and brokers, and I absolutely love what I do. And um, so I, um, I'm delighted to be here with you and super excited to have my friend Tiffany with me because we both, I feel like we're both really um, experienced with building community, but we've built communities in very different ways. And so we're going to combine our minds to talk about that today. So Tiffany, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Well, first of all, I am so excited to do this with you, Marcy. I think today what's going to happen is we're going to create a vortex of community from everything virtual to real, you know, your backyard style communities. So I'm so honored to be kicking this off with you. Um, so my brokerage, I'm president of McQuaid and Company and also McQuaid Marketing and Promotions. So we're based in Naples, Florida. And I started uh, as a realtor almost 20 years ago. And my specialty is not only in marketing, but in community building, neighborhood niche marketing. And how can you own your community? Um, in my case, for almost 18 years, I've been blessed to do that. So our brokerage kind of specializes in neighborhood niche marketing and for the realtors, but also building unity within the communities that they're farming, but also in our own backyard and all throughout Naples. So I'll explain all of that as we go forward, but I'm so excited. Yay. So <clears throat> before we really get started, and Tiffany and I worked on an outline and we actually ended up um, after talking with seven steps, we started with six and we did add one more step. But before I get into, or we get into what those steps are, I think it's important that we, we ask a question that what, what makes consumers stay loyal to a brand? What is that one thing? Because I think there's a lot of reasons why businesses build community, but I think specific to real estate, um, there's one really most important reason. And Tiffany, do you know what that is? Because we didn't prep this. <laughs> I do, human connection. Right. You're absolutely right. It's the, the most, the, the one thing that makes um, people stay loyal to a brand, the one most important thing is that human connection and feeling like you are connected to the business on an emotional level. And that's done through building um, human relationships. So those human relationships are the number one most important thing. Um, <clears throat> and then number two, I want everybody on this call to think about community as part of your business strategy. It's really part of, it's a marketing strategy that at this point, I feel like everybody should be using. I think it's almost more important than social media. Although there's kind of a similarity between them, there's also a big difference. And I feel like you can actually accomplish a lot more with the community than you can by simply posting you know, on social media. And then communities ultimately should exist to serve the people that are in the community. So it's not, it's about serving them and creating content for them and, and building a space where they feel valued and, and where they can communicate and commune, not just with you, but with each other. So let's get into um, <clears throat> what do you think the um, foundations, like how did you start your community? Tiffany, what, I mean, what, what were the foundational things that you, you, what were those decisions that you made before you actually started doing it? Well, I'll tell you. So when I first started in real estate, so for all of you out there that are, um, you know, licensed, trying to figure out what changed, evolved world, uh, you know, that we're currently in, you know, there's so many caring components that you really need to think about. And about 20 years, when I first started in the business, I would walk my community and listen to Zig Ziglar, this uh, motivational speaker back then. And one quote that he said has stuck with me my whole career. And that'll catapult uh, what we're about to talk about. But the quote was, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I don't think that's ever been more evident uh, than it is right now, because 
you know, as we talk about technology, and I feel like I say this so much with the confines of our walls here, but as we talk about technology being such a huge part of innovation, you know, right now we're coming into our own where innovation now, you know, you should really think of how can I create and do things to show, to fill voids in ways outside of technology. So technology may be leading that pack, but what can I do to start building and creating um, a presence boxes that are in a variety of different ways? So uh, quickly, when I started building my community, I was mailing regularly. So three times a month, I would mail what I called a hot sheet mailing, which gave them market access. I would mail out, you know, something that was tchotchka mailing. And we currently have those all over our walls around here uh, that we've converted into a system for our agents. But the thing about when I say a tchotchka mailing, it's something with a cute, um, catchy little slogan or tagline or something like that that aside from providing support data, that you're doing or giving something that makes a connection, that makes like that feel good, um, get them really thinking through ways to connect, you know, with you and, and you with them. Something that's gonna make them smile, giggle, or more importantly, surprise and delight. So <clears throat> I, I didn't know me, if you wanted to add to that. Marcy, no, I just, I just feel like for me it was, or, you know, I work for realtor.com. So it's really, you know, what's in it for them and what's in it, you know, what, what benefits are they going to get out of it? So when I started building our community, I had to look at those things. Like what is our, what's our mission? What, what do we want to get out of building these communities and, and what are our goals? And, and, um, and ultimately it comes down to like understanding what your why is and then defining the, the, the community as you build it. So we actually built two communities and, um, or I've built two communities. One is um, more, more of a open forum community where everybody is welcome. And then the other one is more specific to our product users, but they're two separate communities and the content that we share is different and the focus is different. And the goal of those two communities is different. Um, I think um, you know, the, the one that's more related to product users is, has a really clear defined goal of, of retention. Like we want to retain you and we're going to provide great content and great um, webinars and training. And then the other, um, the other goal is more um, big picture. It's more about reaching out to everybody and changing the, the opinion of realtor.com in the industry and, and bringing good sentiment and making people understand how much we really care about this industry and how much we want to help. So those are kind of the two different, you know, um, the two different visions that we had for the communities. And I think it's, it's important that when you go to start a community, you really understand what your goal is, what you're looking for, the types of relationships you want to build, who do you want to have in all of those things are going to be important. But, um, and then the next step is like, after you get through building, so six, actually seven steps, the next step would be to actually choose your platform. And, um, for me, it was like real um, Facebook groups. We went right to Facebook groups for that. I, Tiffany, you actually started offline, in person. Um, I know there's people that choose to do communities around Instagram or YouTube. There's huge communities on YouTube. They're a little bit different. I personally think Facebook is probably the best place to start a community. Um, or you can do it just like Tiffany did and actually start building the community offline it's a little bit harder to do that during covid <laughs> but build it offline and then take it online tiffany do you want to tell a little bit about your story and how you kind of started it off you know building this real community group offline yeah. sure and you know you said the best thing you were talking about creating or, or explaining your why you know and the importance of sitting back before you do anything and figuring out your why. Do you want to, you know, in our case, I knew when I first started as a, as a realtor that I did not want to be all over town, you know, because I knew, you know, we're in an area with tons of gated communities. 
And I knew that I wanted to be able to really do that community justice by knowing like at the back of my hand, you know, being able to um, convey that you love and that you live in, you know, and you enjoy if it's a community where you live or one that you really like, you know, that comes off. People pick up on that. You know, they, they relate to that. And very quickly, you know, you will be recognized as a market expert, but you have to have presence. And the presence that, you know, I think people get confused sometimes. They think, well, I'm going to mail a postcard. I just listed a property, you know, or just sold a property. I'm going to mail a postcard and then I'm going to sit back and wait for the calls. No, that doesn't happen. You know, you, the, the just solds and the just listeds just know that you've got two to three seconds before that card goes right in the trash. So you really have to think to yourself, if I'm going to build a community and I'm going to create top of mind awareness and recognition for them to call me before they call anyone else when it's for their, you know, real estate move. Uh, you have to put yourself in a position where you need to stand out over and above the others. So that presence isn't just about because you put a piece in a mailbox doesn't mean there's retention. You have to show up. You have to walk, you know, your, your dog or whatever in the neighborhood, let people see you. You know, if you're in the mailbox, you have to have presence there circling. You have to engage, you know, at maybe events within the area or the marketplace or maybe create your own events in the area and the marketplace. You know, I did concerts um, on the golf course in my backyard, you know, tons of things like that that start to elevate and it's all of those and I think probably to me one of the greatest um, challenges that I've noticed over the years is that people forget that connections can be made with you um, outside of just real estate you know but associating you know you top of mind so there's so many feel-good triggers that you can do that will equate over to your business and building your your real community, and then converting it over to your online community. So basically everybody that I know in my community, they're on my Facebook page and, and my personal Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That's really where I can hold it because I want to be authentic me. I want to share, you know, how I'm feeling every morning by saying something maybe that I need motivational, you know, support for. Um, Whatever that would be, I want them to get to know who I am as an individual. So when they see me in their mailbox and they see me walking around or, you know, same thing for my team, when they're seen, I want that equation to completely uh, cross over and continue to build that top of mind awareness. Yeah. To call definitely. them first when the time is right. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like let's talk a little bit about the content, because um, when you build a community, you have to remember that it's not just an online community. It's not just an offline community. It's 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 a it's a community of both. And so you're actually going to be building and creating content to use both online and offline. And um, so there's a lot of great content. You got to remember to keep it. Um, value, try to make sure that it's valuable to the consumer. And one of the things that I love to do um, in my communities is I like to share content that is special just for the community. I don't share it. We don't share it on our other social media channels. It's, it's really fun content that's created just for the community. Or sometimes I'll take content that we've created for our consumers. So it may be some consumer marketing pieces for like holiday specific to a holiday. And I, I've done that several times and I'll add those, all that, all those images that our team have, have worked for months creating and building a strategy around. And I'll take all of the, the, these images and marketing pieces and I'll upload them into the group and I'll say, hey guys, download them and use them however you'd like. And I see it all the time. People do use them. I get tagged in a lot of the posts when people are posting and sharing um, the content that I've put into our community. Um, I mean, there's so many ways to add value, though. It's not just with content. You can just a funny little a joke, something funny. People love, you know, the stress release of laughing. Um, um, 
And then being a cheerleader, because it, it is Can a I community. So they the should be, I'm sorry, I've got a little bit of leg. So if I talk over you, Tiffany, I am so sorry. What were you going to say? No. No, I just wanted to actually add to what you're saying because I, I want to compliment the team at Realtor.com because, Aww. you know, following the Realtor Pro community, you do put out a ton of great content. And I think for all of you watching, you know, please go on and utilize that content. And I'll tell you how we've been using it. And it's been a huge asset for us. So one of the graphs that they put together um, and this was a uh, post-COVID graph, and this was based on the searches of consumer must-haves uh, while people, you know, were kind of in lockdown searching properties, things that they were looking for, you know, now thinking of the home of the future, you know, what are those consumer must-haves? We converted these not only into social media posts, but customized them and sent them out, of course, giving Realtor.com um, credit for all their hard work. But then mail these out with um, market activity on the back and utilize these and, and this data, which we would not have ever had, you know, and having partnerships like this, it helps elevate you as the expert in the market when you have support data from, you know, amazing partners uh, like Realtor.com, you know, that can provide some of these things that, you know, we're all busy. Not everyone has time to completely recreate the wheel, but figure out how to cross promote it on a variety of platforms outside of just social media. Right. Um, some of the other types of content that we do is we love to do surveys and I'm sure you guys, I've probably been um, um, nagging some of my um, closer um, industry friends about doing surveys, but our communications team has done multiple surveys over the last few months. And we actually take those surveys and we turn them into stories that we're writing um, that are usually consumer facing stories. And sometimes we give credit to people and sometimes we don't, but um, uh, that's one of the, one of the ways that we leverage our community to help um, our own internal teams is through doing things like that. Um, and then one of the other things that I love doing in my community is our comms team works really closely with the press and um, we get press requests quite often, usually, I don't know, maybe one or two a week. And the first place I place those press requests is usually inside our group because I want to give that community first choice. Like I'll say, hey, I need um, a realtor in, you know, Denver that has this experience or knows buyers that are doing this or that, whatever it may be that the press, this person in the press is wanting to write a story about. And um, so that's another great thing. I love to help get our, our community members featured in um, great and big national news stories. And so do you have anything to add to the content, Tiffany? Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, there going back to um, what you were saying about some of the news stories and, you know, things of that, that sort, aren't we all kind of tired of the news a little <laughs> bit, you know? So that to me is one segue that I think gives us in this industry a huge opportunity right now, because there's so many things going on that you can, that maybe are not the most positive, that if you sit back for a minute and figure out what can I do, what can I post, what can I utilize to help build community and unite community by what can I do that's gonna put a smart client who maybe you know just was ill, uh, what can I do for just the heck of it to mm -hmm. Truly surprise and delight people, and you'll be surprised how much unity gets built within the community when it's being surrounded by positivity. You know, we do things not only in our individual communities to pull everyone together, everything from, you know, rabbit hunts we mail out, you know, for various holidays. Um, like for Easter, we sent out rabbits that they could cut out of a postcard and put in the window and it engaged all all the families to go around and spot the rabbit you know, during, during quarantine period um, gave a great activity, but what did it do? It unified the community. 
And, and, it created and not just to you, but to each other, which is amazing. To each other. Yeah. yeah, and I actually, we had asked them to move the rabbits every couple of days, you know, in the windows, and you can do it with pumpkins, you can do it with Santa, you can do it with whatever, you know, is, is uh, reminiscent of your area or what's going on, have them move it every couple of days, and then that makes a whole nother hunt. So you keep them out there regularly engaging, how many did you spot, put it out on social media, you know, how many did you spot within the community, you know, Whatever that would be, what happens then without even realizing it outside of a real estate space, they're going in their hunting houses, you know, and this is just one example I, of an idea. So love, again, I have told, you've told me about this activity. You've told me about that campaign before, and it's like, I just love it for so many reasons. So. So having problems with hearing Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany, you're cutting in and out a little bit. Are you there? So, all right, well, I'm going to move on. I'm sure yes, I'm be... here. I'm here. Okay, I'm good. sure good. what's happening. Yeah, there's a little bit of, of um, your audio was cutting in and out a little bit, but we hear you now. So we're okay. good. So. And I was just going to say that um, one of the beautiful things about building a community too, is you do create that emotional connection when you're, when you're sharing content, when I share content with my community, even though it's a realtor.com community, I'm sharing it as Marcy James, I'm sharing it as myself, and I'm building those genuine relationships with people that are in the community. And one of the first things that we did when COVID hit back in um, early March, when I was pulled off the road, and still, or actually might have been in February. No, it was early March, I believe. Um, we were one of the, I was probably one of the first communities to start doing um, webinars. I mean, we started doing specific to COVID, I should say. And I noticed right away that people were, were just panicking and people didn't know where to turn or what to do. And I immediately started what's what we called our mastermind series and it, it lasted a couple months, but during the beginning we went online and I had people come on with me and we were online every single day, giving a webinar about what are you doing, how are you handling it in your market, what are you seeing, how are you, you know, how are you doing business. And I had so many people in the community reach out to me and thank me and they were just they I think it was you know, it was in that time in need and people needed um, to see what other, it was just, they, they found it incredibly valuable. And over time, you know, everybody started doing webinars about COVID and they didn't really need mine as much. And we slowly tapered off and eventually stopped doing them. But I felt like for that, you know, one month period where we were doing a bunch of them, I think we made a difference. And um, that was really um, fun to be a part of a fun experience. So. Yeah. I think any of that connectivity um, points, you know, obviously us connecting virtually is not the same as being able to see you and hug you at a, at a conference or whatever it would be. Right. But there are so many ways to really make this highly, highly valuable, you know, and I, I look at, um, you know, one of the things that we have been lucky enough to be able to start doing for our community is an outdoor movie night. And it's something that our company is sponsoring and putting together and we're correlating it. But, you know, boy, has it been nice to just get people safely to be able to sit outside. You know, of course, we've got gorgeous weather right now. Um, you know, sit outside, watch a movie and engage and then be able to cross promote that over a variety of platforms and include all the local restaurants around us, you know, for dinner and a movie packages, delivery straight to their squares, you know, that they reserve our safe squares. Um, okay. But then also being able to put that on a, on a you know, community-based platform virtually, you know, and being able to cross promote all those channels. And I think, you know, that's a step that we all need to start thinking about now, you know, building community on, um, virtually is obviously huge, but how can you cross it over and build real community if you haven't already, you know, mm -hmm. because it's that interconnectivity, that crossing over, that being able to um, hit touch points with them without physically, uh, you know, doing that. But, mm -hmm. you know, the reality is that that going forward, 
that caring connection is, is huge. So how can you think of ways that you can convert uh, the community that you've built in an online platform and think of other ways to fill and fit uh, these voids, you know, mm -hmm. things, things that you can do that can support and supplement. Yeah. So let's, let's move. Um, let's talk a little bit about how do you find the members of your community and, or how do you bring the members of your offline community into an online community. Mm -hmm. And for, for me, um, one of the first things I did when I was building communities at realtor.com was I would target a, a group of influencers. And I don't like to, let me just preface this by saying any relationship, whether it's with an influencer or um, anybody else has to there needs to be value provided on both sides. So when I leverage influencers or when I work with influencers in the industry, I'm always thinking about how can I bring them value? How can I add value to them? So I do leverage them occasionally, but I'm always focused on bringing them value as well. So I just wanted to get that out there so you guys know that. But one of the first things um, that, I, that I always do is I leverage my, my influencers. So I reach out to my industry influencers and I say, hey, I'm building this community, I'm placing you in it. We, you know, please help me, please, you know, provide, you know, share content occasionally, please, you know, um, invite your friends, um, your realtor friends, if you feel like they would be interested and this would be a value to them. So I think that a great way to really start building a community is to leverage um, your influencers and whether those are your community influencers, because every community has that, those moms that are like the cheerleaders and are always putting the play groups together and the, you know, the, the neighborhood parties and the, you know, those, those sorts of things and finding, finding out who those people are and being able to leverage them to help you build a group is, is really important because um, for many reasons, because they start to feel some ownership of the community as well, and they help you promote it and help you run it and they can help you moderate it. But um, how, to, how did you, and then I imagine if you're starting with an offline community, which most realtors are, most realtors should already have somewhat of a community in the area that they work in mm -hmm. or focus their work in. Um, how do you get them to join your community? How do you, how do you market that to them? Well, I'll tell you what, it, you know, and this is probably something that we learned during COVID too. I was trying to find, I was going to show you something, but, you know, I, I think leveraging influencers, you're absolutely correct, but there's also, you know, a whole nother component here. And I know um, some people I, I've seen it circulating through social media, but, uh, and that's partnering and aligning with local restaurants, local businesses, um, things of that sort that you can cross promote, leverage, tag. You know, I was trying to find uh, actually- Such a great idea. I, yeah, I thought I had one here somewhere, but maybe, um, anywho, so like prime example, mailing out or doing something where you're sharing uh, maybe your favorite, for me, slices of pizza. Anybody that follows me online knows I'm a pizza addict. So who better to share my favorite places to get delivery to your home from, you know, at a time when maybe you don't want to go out as much, but a pizza connoisseur, right? So outside of real estate, you know, being able to mail something like that and then maybe offering a, a slice of paradise, you know, on a, on a property on the other side. I love um, your pizza marketing. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> well, you know, I learned a long time ago that when you're building your online community, and maybe you have something to add to this, Marcy, I'm sure. But I learned that if I can't, I, I go on and I'll randomly pull, you know, people in my community and say, okay, and, and not people that I've known my whole life or people that I'm super close to. I'm talking just some of my random people. Can you name or would you mind? Um, can you think of three things that just based on you following me online that you know that I like or that you've learned about me as a person or, you know, that you've recognized or associate? And if you can, if these people can think of three to five, ideally, things, then I believe you're doing a very good job in making a connection with them, you know, to understand who you are what you're about, you know, where those shared commonalities are that they think of you when they see, you know, 
a pizza meme or something <laughs> and they send it to you or, you know, in my case, I get lions, I get dachshunds, I get uh, inspirational mm -hmm. quotes, you know, so I think that that is a, is a really big key, but then also um, going back to like the restaurants, you know, cross promotion, there's so many ways to do that, you know, whether you mm -hmm. mail, um, you know, mail out and maybe on one side, you're doing your thing. And then on the other side, and maybe make the two sides quarterly, you put a takeout menu for your favorite, you know, Chinese restaurant or your favorite local, whatever it would be. And then you then share it on social media platforms, you tag them, you know, and you start building a community um, of followers through that, that cross promotion, you know, that engagement on um, uh, local supporting local. That's what I yeah. keep saying. And in today's times, the more we can support, the more that positive factor goes through the roof and people want to work with people that make them feel good. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah, you want to work with people that, I mean, how many times have we heard it that, you know, you like, and that, you know, are that you've built a relationship with through community <laughs> right? and are the market expert. And just because, you know, maybe you, I, I mean, probably most of us, and I know you can say this, Marcy, but you know, there's many people that we have on our online platforms that you've never even met face to face, although you feel like you know them. You know, mm -hmm. if they're doing a great job posting what they're posting and you're connecting and vice versa, you feel like you've known them. Then when you see them face to face, you know, it's a, it's a comfortable connection. How can you not want to do business with someone that you feel a comfortable connection with? Right. You know, 100%. it's that... I always say it's that mind belly connection, you know, it's, if, if you make them feel, you know, maybe a, a warm, fuzzy, feel good feeling in their belly, you know, it, it creates, it just pushes you top of the mind in so many facets and a vortex um, of facets that pushes you ahead of all of your competitors. How could anyone compete with someone who just put rabbits and <laughs> they, were right. rabbits with and they just ordered their favorite pizza. I don't know how anybody competes with you, Tiffany. I really don't. I mean, I, if I was in Naples, I'd just throw in the towel, like let the, uh, I'm going, I'm going to go, I'm going to go sell cars or something else. <laughs> I'm so kind. There's so many amazing people here, you know, but I think we're, we can all be so much more amazing as an industry, you know, and yeah. I, I, I just, I get so excited and passionate, you know, at the thought of just all the voids that are out there to fill, to truly cross promote communities, mm -hmm. real community and virtual community. Yeah. And how can you make your real community happy if you can do that first or, or vice versa, and then completely cross it over and integrate the two, you'll be untouchable, you know, really. Um, it's just, it, it's incredible what happens. So let's talk about a few tips too. Like once you have your community going, and I know we've, we've sprinkled them throughout the conversation, but I have a couple here that I specifically want to highlight, like some tips to really create this thriving, thriving community. And I think, um, you know, celebrating the members, of course, is always important. And, but I think one of the important pieces, which you're absolutely amazing at is taking it offline. So not everybody, like for me, it's a little bit more difficult because my, my community isn't in my backyard. My community is all over the United States. So how do you take that offline? And of course, especially during COVID, it's hard, but you know, at events and providing little goodies. Like when I am at events, I always have swag in my backpack. Anybody that knows me knows there's always swag in my backpack. So, you know, providing some swag to them. Um, but really, you know, thank you notes, little surprise gifts. Every once in a while, I'll pick, you know, two or three people from my community that I'm feeling grateful for. Write a little note, send a little gift, a little something. Um, just those little personal touches, I think, are important to really create a community that thrives. And, and when you are doing that, make sure that you point out, you know, thank you for, thank them for being a part of your community and for contributing to it and for making it a richer community so that um, your, your community message is getting through to them as well. Um, 
And, and it's not just about thanking them for their real estate transaction or, you know, right. something real estate based, but just about, um, you know, again, one of the things that we did during lockdown that I continued to do since then is uh, every other week I pick a few people in my community and, you know, I'm kind of circling the community now, uh, but I'll send them surprise pizza. You know, I was sending pizza and anapastas from one of my favorite local places that I was supporting, you know, and had it delivered like a surprise and delight, ding dong, you know, you have pizza and anapasta at your door. Um, you know, I did deliver Krispy Kremes, um, drove up an hour away from here, got dozens and dozens and went and just dropped them at doors, you know, of people's homes. And of course, yeah. you have to really think it through and, you know, be careful of your demographic and what exactly you're doing, you know, but yeah. it's, it's things like that, that, um, you know, truly unite the community and what happens, you know, they, with organically, without even really realizing or intending this to happen, they all talk, you know, oh my gosh, I got, you know, Krispy Kremes from that crazy neighbor around the corner, you know, <laughs> or whatever it could be, but it creates talking points, you know, hundred oh, percent. And I just have to tell you this quick little story yeah. yes. because we had steak for dinner. I think it was Sunday night, might've been Monday night. It was a few nights ago and we had steak for dinner and my husband, my son was over, we were grilling up the steaks and my husband had used um, this seasoning that was in the pantry on the steaks. And my son's like, wow, this seasoning is really good. What is this? And he goes, oh, it's that McQuaid stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, I know that that's, that's, stuff, that's Tiffany McQuaid. She sent me that. Like she makes her own labels and she puts them on. Like, I honestly have no idea what the real brand of that steak seasoning is, but it's now the McQuaid stuff. <laughs> well, so let me just say, you know, uh, we kind of, we brand everything here. I don't care what it is. It's branded. It could be graters. You know, it would be great to work with you. It's steak seasoning. Tis the season for selling, you know. It's, it's filling these voids in an innovative way to create, you don't know when those moments are going to happen. I had no idea she was going to go there with that comment. And I sent that to you, Marcy, probably what, two years ago? Maybe? I know. I have to say it, it like sat in the pantry and wasn't open for probably a year. And then we started, and then my husband's like, oh, let's try this, you know? <laughs> that crazy McQuaid seasoning. But on the front of it, it says, tis the season for selling. It's so you know, cute. And, yeah. And literally, you know, we just take products and, you know, I, do, I am blessed with an incredible uh, creative director who's been with me for years here, you know, so we produce our own labels and things in house and label them and do them, but you don't have to do that that way. You know, there's, there's so many ways that you can do that, you know, on your own and just figure out innovative ways that, you know, you never know when it's going to hit or come back at you. You know, but that create these feel good moments. I'm telling you, doing those types of things, mm -hmm. it, it starts with one person. And then I like to say it sneezes out to, to everybody. So if you make one person happy and you get them talking and then they go to one and they go to the one and before you know it, they've sneezed it out to everyone that they know, you know, you've got to call this girl. I, the, I have her steak seasoning, you know, she'll sell your house, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's things like that, that create unity within the community. And oh, um, first. oh, there she is. I thought I lost you. No, no, no I'm here. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I wanted to, I think we've covered most of our, our points. There was one thing that I, I feel like you have kind of, um, talked about throughout, but that um, one of the goals of community and one of the things that you should accompany with that is farming to yes. your community. Do you want to, yes. do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Yes. So, you know, marketing just runs through my veins and as you can tell, I'm super passionate about it, right? But I sit back and I've monitored our market for 20 years. I watch with over 8,000 realtors, the ones that are within my line of sight that I see on a regular basis. I watch and watch and watch over all these years. And the one thing that I can give to all of you that are out there, you know, farming is 
you know, please, if you're, if you're mailing or, you know, anything like that, and you're wanting to establish presence and top of mind awareness and become the king or queen of your farm or the market expert, you have to create presence. And, and I always say presence that's present when you're not present. And the only way For to sure. do that, the only way to do that is with consistency. If you choose to mail, make sure you're mailing regularly. And if you think one time a month or one time every other month, cause you don't want to spend much money or what have you, it's not going to work. You may as well just not do it. You know, the reality is you have to be present, especially at the onset, you have to be present consistently, regularly, and for a long time, you know, our team, we, we make them do six months right at the onset, three times a month, you know, two, three times a month consistently, you know, depending on the area, but create that exactly what, um, what I was just saying, a presence that's present when you're not present, but love make that. sure yeah. that if you're going to spend the money, you're making it stand out. Don't just accept status quo because status quo is no go. No go. <laughs> thank you so much, Tiffany. And um, oh, Vera and Deborah, we are probably running over. So I apologize. Oh, no, you are so per like uh, to the minute. Okay, good. To oh, the minute. You, uh, this has been great. We have gotten such great feedback, not only in the chat, but I've gotten Instagram posts. <laughs> I've gotten Facebook page, Facebook Yay. messenger. People are really enjoying uh, your conversation and the, the, the tips and tools and resources. Uh, Tiffany, I think that you are saying about presence needs to be on a pillow. <laughs> on a pillow? <laughs> on a pillow in everyone's office, reminding them. Like, yeah, uh, right. Such right. an important statement. Um, you know, pill pillow talk. Yes, that, for sure. That, yeah. I think that's just a great way for people to kind of encapsulate all of the things that you've talked about. Um, Sarah, I know that you have a question that you are going to share from, is it Natalia? That's yeah, there's a question that came in the chat. And first of all, can I just say that I have a, a, a huge craving for Krispy Kreme donuts now? <laughs> just going to say that and pizza, you know, all the carbs. So thank you. You shared so much great wisdom with the community today. Uh, this one is for Marcy from Natalia, and she asked if you can share some specific tips for a Facebook community as you're building that community. I think she already has a live and a live community happening and an audience, but what are more specific tips to help build that up? Yeah, sure. I think, especially with Facebook, one of the most important things you need to do is set up rules right away um, for us. So as you're creating the Facebook group, there's an area where you can create your rules and, you know, just the basics, be a good neighbor, um, you know, no spamming, no spamming, but also no bullying, no, no bullying of each other or our mean, I mean, we, we say it in a much better way than I'm going to tell you it right now, but just no, no bullying of each other, just be nice. Be, this is a community. We're here for the benefit of everyone. So everyone needs to be to be kind. And I tell you, there's really not a day goes by that we don't delete spam from the group. But every time that we do, we delete them. And then we um, it gives you the option, would you like to send a message? And yes, we point out the rule that was broken and we send the message. And, and it's 99% of the time it's spam. There's really, no, there's little, every once in a while we'll get um, some bullies in the group. And, and it's usually more to us than to anybody else. But the point is we're here to help you. This is not, this is not a forum for you to come in and complain. This is, if you're having a customer service issue, tell me what that is. And I am happy to help you solve that problem. And we're not perfect and we're going to make mistakes. But also I'm not here to be, to be bullied by you or to have you, you know, saying, you know, giving me a history of 20 reasons why you don't like realtor.com. That's not what this group is for. So, so there are times <laughs> when, you know, we will, we will delete things, but number one is set up those rules and follow those rules. Number two is, again, you have, you can't do it on your own. You have to enlist other people to help you do it. Um, uh, and again, if you have um, a couple of influencers that you're willing to, you know, somehow provide value back to them that will help you um, moderate and build and invite people and, and help you with content. I think that's really important. Um, and then just to get the word out there to everybody. And I think in many cases, Facebook groups will grow very organically. Our group has grown 
very organically at both of our groups. We always get continually get new members and um, consistency, just consistency, consistency, consistency with posting, which has been really hard for me. If you're in my community, I'm sorry. I have not been consistent over the last few months. <laughs> Can I add to that? No, absolutely. Um, yes, please. So my, uh, my mentor kind of years ago when I was first starting to build a, you know, social media presence, I think at that time I had maybe 300 friends and thought, you know, that was good. I thought, wow, I know 300 people. This was, this was probably close to 10 years ago. And um, she said to me, along with her uh, PR specialist, they gave me the best tips. And he said to me, the best way to build an organic community under you as an individual is to start by posting within the one hour window every single day. And I started that and boy, was that a commitment. And that's been like 10 years ago. And I pretty much, I very rarely, I did miss a couple of days this weekend, but I consistently post every morning between like five and seven, typically, um, you know, but I noticed right away within the first month of doing that, the first probably 30 to 45 days, I was getting consistent friend requests. And what I decided to do, and this was probably the best tip, I was posting what he said, when you get up in the morning, because I said, well, what do I post? He said, I'll give you an idea. He said, when you get up in the morning, think to yourself, how do I feel today? You know, what do I want to tackle today? What do I need to make me maybe get going and feel a little better today? He said, and then figure out something from there, you know, fill the void from there. So every morning I do not pre-plan it out. Every morning when I get up and I'm drinking my coffee, that's what I'm thinking. And typically I'm posting something that I need to hear, you know, mm -hmm. because when you see it in writing, it's, <laughs> it's better, right? Hey. But yeah. I know that clearly there's got to be other people out there that need to hear it too. So, so I'm posting that consistently and within 30 days and then 60 days, I was getting, I got to a point where I was getting like a hundred friend requests a day. Oh my gosh. And it was just this basic consistency and from a period, from a place of authenticity, you know, mm -hmm. literally. And I think people start to pick up on that. And then he said, and exactly kind of what I mentioned earlier, and this is such a great tip, sit down and think of three to five things that you are passionate about, that you really love, that make you smile, that are going to, you know, that it's just who you are, an essence of who you are and what you love and integrate those things into your platform That's so that great people tip. start to connect. And then the third thing was exactly what I um, just said come from a place of authenticity, you know, because I think people can read through it. You know, sometimes I share some very authentic and very vulnerable stories about my life. And typically they come from, you know, maybe something that's happened that causes me to derive, you know, sharing that, you know, and it's not something that you want to do all the time, but gosh, you don't know who you're helping. You don't know who you're touching and you don't know, you know, where, it, it, it's, it makes such a huge difference. And again, without even really realizing it, that top of mind awareness and recognition comes so organically as a result, you don't need to sell yourself. They're sold on you. Wow. That's, that's so good. You know, one of the things that we do inside the woman up community and our influencers, obviously we, we call them wave makers and <laughs> the wave maker program is, is all about Co um, connecting diverse women inside the community. And, and I'll tell you, one of the best things that came out of the Wavemaker program was the ability for people to see themselves in someone in the community, right? So I think sometimes people get frustrated or overwhelmed with creating community on Facebook because they let it fall on their shoulders alone. And so whether you're building a big community around a brand like Marcy or a movement like Woman Up or a business like Tiffany, there are always other people who can share 
in the message side of things. And Mm -hmm. it's, it is important to highlight the other members of your team as well, because it's, that's also a retention. If you have, if you have amazing team members inside your organization, there's no need until the community is so huge. You can't control it to even hire someone because Mm -hmm. you've got Tiffany one day, Marcy, the next, then you've got Sarah, then you've got Deborah. If everyone's managing one day a week and it's consistently, you, actually have the ability to attract even more people that way. Yep. A hundred percent. That team comment to me, I mean, that like speaks to my soul because every, my, my core team has been with me, you know, 10 plus years and I couldn't be who I am and do what I'm doing, even with our technical glitches, you know, my behind the scenes here was helping me be the best that I can be, you know, and that's so true, Deborah. you know, that you have to create that and utilize that as part of your support system to really grow your community, whether it's virtually or, you know, um, uh, real your real life. Right. Right. Well, and, and, you know, I've seen Marcy do it inside her pro community, highlighting different voices. Uh, You know, obviously we have this new program that we're launching inside woman up, but we've actually had that um, that's been woven into every initiative that we've had, whether it's share your story or shine a light on her or, uh, you know, and both of those have led to women being on our stages. I think at this point, Sarah, it's like 300 voices we've highlighted uh, in the woman up community amazing. and that's Everyone. really because they're saying that is so awesome right it's their it, yeah. and it's they're saying i i have a story to share and that's so right. when when we ask our team members when we ask our community if there's something on their heart that they want to talk about and we have a platform that we've created it, there there really is nothing i have found in the last decade of being in social media that connects and strengthens the foundation of a community when it isn't one talking head, when it is multiple people coming around the table, sharing their favorite snacks, right? Sharing their favorite meals. And I, that's one of the things that, that Sarah and I, you know, after every event, after every, you know, Friday weekly, we're like, love this community this the voices and everyone being their own brave selves and you know opening the kimono and being vulnerable and sharing those things so whew. Um, I do want to think- ask one last question it, yes. it, it, it came through in the Q&A box and I do want to Jill McNamee um, I love the pizza delivery idea so Tiffany this one's for you how okay. do you make sure that they that they'll actually be home when the pizza is delivered and uh, do you let them know that, that the pizza's coming and I'll, I'll give you my address after and I'll wait for mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll send you my address too, Tiff. <laughs> Have yours, Marcy. <laughs> well, so that's a fantastic question. So during lockdown, it was easy peasy because everybody was home. So it was literally ding dong, you know, someone's at your door and everybody was home, never had a problem. Now it's a little different dynamic. So here's what I do. And this is a great way to cross over platforms. I text them, you know, if if I have their text information, if not, I call them or their landline, but I text them and say, um, ding dong. And I put like the little doorbell emoji, you know, ding dong. I have a surprise coming at you. Will you be home at X time? And then that starts text dialogue. They come back and say, well, yes, you know, and then it starts dialing. Maybe what's the surprise or what have you can't tell you, you know, just be ready. And That's then, what surprise means. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, you know, they get it and then they reach out again. You know, they're all excited. So what's happened? You know, maybe it's I mean, somebody that can ever turn away to? pizza, right? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I didn't mean right? to interrupt, but who would right? ever turn that away, right? <laughs> oh, so good. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's just okay. that feel good, but it's open dialogue with someone that maybe, you know, you haven't had dialogue with for a little while. And it's just giving back and putting a smile on their face. Yes. 
So beautiful. Okay. I think we've covered um, all of the questions. Uh, ladies, I don't want to lose this opportunity for the two of you to share with how people can get in touch with you if they've got questions. So what's, um, Tiffany, let's start with you. What's the best way for people to reach out to you if they want to continue the conversation? Okay, so if you want to continue on, I'm happy to help you where I can. My email address is Tiffany at mcquaidco.com. So it's Tiffany at mcquaidco.com, or you can call our office at 239-300-4880. I would love nothing more than to help this incredible community of outstanding women. Wonderful. We'll make sure to add that to, to the show notes. We'll make sure to add that. How about you, Marcy? How do people get in touch with you? Um, well, of course, I'd love for all of you to join my community, which oh. um, is a group on Facebook called um, Realtor Pro Community. And um, we'll stick the link to that in the show comments as well for you. Um, but you feel free to email me, marci, M-A-R-C-I dot james at realtor.com. And um, I would love to continue this conversation. So Can I just add, make sure you join that Realtor Pro community because remember, they put up great collateral <laughs> that you can use and share not only on social media, but print it off, mail it out to your customers. Now I owe you pizzas. I like <laughs> it. Well, that's the Thursday. beauty of this community. That is the beauty. And, and Marcy, one more time, may we say thank you so much for your support for realtor.com being a sponsor partner okay. in 2020. We have loved partnering with you and we hope to partner with you in 2021. Um, and <laughs> I would love that too. We're, we're so thankful that uh, we can weave all of these layers together inside this community. So ladies, um, thank you again for serving of us delicious divine wisdom today. We will uh, be sharing the replay with everyone. I know that we did get a couple of questions that aren't actually for the two of you that were for Sarah and I, and they were like, well, how do I become an expert on the show? Uh, and so for anybody who's wondering how this works, and how Q4 was put together, we asked amazing women like Tiffany and Marcy who raised their hands and said yes earlier this year to join us on other panels and at the event, we asked them to give us one more hour of their time this year to reiterate and really create a, a different format for their conversations. So all of the women that you're gonna see in Q4 are women who have served us boldly and bravely bravely and brilliantly in this year. Uh, starting next year, we'll switch it up. We'll do, of course, another share your story type campaign. And so if there's something on your heart that you want to teach all of us, that some wisdom that you want to sprinkle over us, do not fear. There will be plenty of time in 2021 to do that. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can always catch us on the Facebook group or womanup at car.org. Shoot us an email there. We would love to get in touch with you. Sarah, I'm closing words. Those, yes. I'm adding all of those links in the chat. And Tiffany, one last time, your email address for the it's Tiffany, T I F F A N Y, at McQuaidco, M C Q U A I D C O dot com. And I encourage you all to join the Facebook group if you're not there already, because these two wonderful ladies are a part of that community and have been building that. We have been building that for several years. So that is my parting words of wisdom. Join us there. Go to IamWomanUp.com to get more information about the movement. And we will see you next week. Wednesday. No. Abs. Yes. Yeah. Next Wednesday. Yes. Next Wednesday, 11. 11, 11. <laughs> I, I will not be here next Wednesday, but Sarah will be here for sure. Uh, and then for the final plug is for the mentor program. If you have not joined it, if you have joined it, but haven't been over there, make sure to check that out. It's over on the Facebook group. Um, I believe that both these ladies are uh, mentors on that page. So that's another way that you can connect with them. But if this is something that you really feel passionate about, if this is a topic that you want to help others with as well, become a mentor, become a mentor today. It's free to be a mentor and it's free to be mentored. So join <laughs> us over there on the Facebook group. We'll see you next, we next week. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you Bye. for having us, Deborah Thank and Sarah. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You bet. Bye.